Hi everyone, welcome back to the workshop and part 2 of the 34401A repair. In the part 1 video, which I'll link down below, you saw me deal with this burnt out PCB here. And I actually went ahead and designed a new board that would sit above it and I actually preliminary fitted it. However, as you can see, I backtracked a little bit just so that I can make some modifications and here is the board that I designed and fitted. And as you can see, I've removed the resistors because I'm no longer going to use this one. I've redesigned a new one. And the reason for that is this edge here of the board, which lines up almost exactly with the edge of the original board, actually comes very, very close to the actual front panel board that sits here. And I've decided that those resistors there, uh, which will be subject to quite a high voltage coming in, uh, is a little bit too close to that front board. Really, those two resistors there need offset in that direction, much like they were on the original board. So here's my new board already fully assembled, ready to go. And as you can see, this part of the board here is a lot thinner if I hold it up against the original one. So if I lay it in place using the same mounting point, you can see that those resistors there are offset in that direction. And I've also gone ahead and designed in the slot there which will make it fit against that front panel. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some Kapton tape on the back of this board because it will be pretty close to the main board at the bottom there and pretty close to that burnt out carbon there. So I thought, well, again, since it's going to be subject to quite high voltages coming in, I think there needs to be some sort of barrier here and I think probably Captain tape will do the job. So let me go and fit the Captain tape and then mount the board on the main board and we'll take it from there. But before I actually go and fit it to the main board, I'm actually going to stick this in the ultrasonic cleaner. Now the reason for that is I have cleaned the top of the board in and around the solder pads on those resistors etc. However, flux will make its way underneath the actual resistor packages themselves. And that's not good when there's potentially uh, hundreds if not thousands of volts. So I've got uh, my ultrasonic cleaner out so let's put it in and clean the board off. And here is my ultrasonic cleaner. And no, it's not the big one that I normally use. This one is just a cheap and cheerful one used to clean watches, spectacles, that sort of thing. It doesn't have a heater and it's pretty low power, but it will work because I have tried it before and it does take flux off of PCBs. So it'll be ideal for my little PCB here. I'm actually going to put IPA in it. Now, it's safe to do that when it doesn't have a heater. And just, I think, a couple of minutes should clean off the board, no problem. And there, I think that'll do. So let me get the board out, dry it off, and I'll move on to the next stage. And there we go, Captain Tape fitted. Right, ready to fit it to the main board. Okay, so I've put the links on the underside of the board. Now the green wires are actually the connections to my new board. You've got the ground connection there which goes off to the two capacitors. I drilled a hole in the board. It goes down through right next to where the uh, capacitors interface. So that's that one. And then I've got the incoming signal from one of the contacts on the relay. And it goes away off down through the board right into the new board to provide the signal there. The output from the board is actually on the other side. It doesn't come to the underside at all. And this yellow Kynar wire links here, well, that's because these original traces there, which were intact, 
actually go into the carbonized area on the board and there's going to be some impedance between them so what I did was if I isolated them I've cut them at this end and cut them just before it attaches to the relay there and also uh, over here as well and I've just linked them back up with Kynar wire so that they don't go through that carbonized board there keep the impedance as high as possible Okay, that's the board back in the chassis there, just temporarily so that I can power up. So let's just turn it on and see what we get. No power on self-test errors, that's encouraging. So now let me just go along the line here and let's see what sort of uh, display we get for the various functions. Well the DC voltage is floating around there that's actually encouraging and that's kind of telling me that the ADC is working. Let's try AC voltage and very similar for that. How about resistance? A nice open circuit. Yep yeah, that looks good as well. So let me go back to DC voltage let me hook up a PDVS2 mini and let's see if we're actually getting something on the display there. Okay, here we go, PDVS2 mini hooked up. Let me just go to one volt. Yes! Spot on! Perfect! That's looking great. Now I want to try resistance mode as well. Okay, let me try my resistance box here. Put it in two wire mode. Dead short. Yes, 0.1 of an ohm. Let's just go to 10k. Yes, that's working as well. Wow. 900k. Yes, 0.9 of a mega ohm. Resistance mode is working. But what about those errors that were recorded on the sticker on the top of the unit? Well, I'm not getting any power on self test errors. But let's just run the diagnostics and see what it picks up. Let's disconnect the input lead. Right, I'll go on to menu. Uh, I need to go to the sys menu if I can remember how to work this. And test. And I think you press this one again to run the test. Test all. Off it goes. And this will take a few seconds. You can hear the relays clicking. It would normally beep if it came across an error. As you, and it's passed. Yep, it would normally beep every time it came across an error as it was running the test. I got no beeps there and it passed the test. Okay, I think it's now time to reassemble the chassis as much as I can. Certainly put the front panel on, put the uh, shields on, the protective covers on both sides of the circuit board there and get it ready for a little bit more testing. And here's a look at the front panel fitted and you can see that my gap there is pretty good between the new board and the front panel itself and you can see the little cutout that I made is perfectly placed as well. So it's looking not too bad at all. Okay, let's switch it on again. And I've got a one millivolt signal coming in. Just to check stability there, let me put it on six and a half digit mode. And that's not too bad. So let me just go to one volt and I'm going to try the rear terminals this time. And yes, they're working as well. Well, there's the unit back together again. I will do a good suite of tests on it. Voltage, current, frequency, resistance, uh, continuity mode, everything. But I'll do that off camera. That's a boring bit, I think. And I'll make sure it's working on every function. But I think it's safe to say I can take the mask and tape off the top of the unit that had the error codes written on it. And we'll just get rid of that. Now I do actually have another 34401A uh, for repair, so let me just bring it onto the workbench, take a quick little look, 
And here it is, it's an Agilent branded 34401A and it's got some masking tape on the top of it as well. Let's take a quick little look. Error code 612, 613, 615, 617 and 619. No, it couldn't be. Oh no! Oh no! Yes, another burnt out board. Exactly the same fault. Well, not too surprising. These two 34401As came from the same place. So I wonder if the technician blew one of them up and then proceeded to blow the other one up as well. Wow. So I've got an identical fault with this second unit here, but I'm going to repair that one off camera. It's obviously going to be the identical process to what I did with the first unit. And luckily enough, I've got quite a number of these boards here and the components to go on them. So it should be a quick and easy repair as well. So that'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching and remember you can always comment down below and don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel grow. There's plenty more repair videos on my channel from the simple to the complex. Check them out and thanks for watching.